श्वेता प्रसन्ना वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर आई जी एस गोवा जियो कॉन्क्लेव सिक्स डॉक्टर विक्टर डिमेलो गोवा लेक्चर टुडे वी आर ऑनर्ड टू हैव विद अस एज अ चीफ गेस्ट इंजीनियर मोहन रामनाथन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ डी एफ आई प्रोफेसर के एस राव फॉर्मर एमेरिटस प्रोफेसर इन जियो टेक्निकल इंजीनियरिंग आई आई टी डेली डॉक्टर अनिल जोसेफ आई जी एस प्रेसिडेंट प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर कृपाशंकर एम एस एच ओ डी प्रोफेसर के जी गुप्ता प्रोफेसर पूर्णानंद सावेकर चेयरमेन आई जी एस गोवा चैप्टर एंड इंजीनियर उमेश कोलकनी सेक्रेटरी आई जी एस गोवा चैप्टर लेट एस इन्वोक द माइंड ऑफ गॉड विद इन्वोकेशन श्लोका आई रिक्वेस्ट मिस्टर गोविंद भगत टू ऑफर द प्रेयर्स थ्रू अ श्लोका नमो जिया वेद प्रतिपा जय जय स्वसंवेद्या आत्मूपा देवा गणेशु सकलार्थमति प्रकाशु मणे निवृत्तिदासु अवधारी जो जी आम्हा मराठा चिबोल कवतुके परी अमृता ते ही पैजाशि जिंके ऐसी अक्षरे रसिके मेड़वीन या कुंदेन्दु तुषार हार धवला या शुभ्र वस्त्रवृता या वीणा वरदंडमंडित करा या श्वेत पद्मासना या ब्रह्माच्युत शंकर प्रभुति देवै सदा वंदिता सामा पातु सरस्वती भगवती निशेष जाड्यापहा गुरुर्ब्रह्मा गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वरा गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्म तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम तस्म श्री गुरव नम थैंक यू थैंक यू सर नौ I request dignitaries to come forward to light the lamp.
Thank you all. I request Professor Puranan Savikar to escort Chief Guest Engineer Mohan Ramnathan and Dr. Anil Joseph. Professor K.G. Gupta to escort K.S. Rao and Engineer Umesh Kulkarni to escort Principal Dr. M.S. Kripashankara and request all to occupy their seat on the dais. Plus, are a proud accession of a day of beauty and values encapsulating all the warmth of our welcome. Let us give a floral, a floral welcome to our dignitaries on the dais. I request our beloved students to present a bouquet of flowers to the dignitaries on the dais. I request Ms. Priyanka to give a, floor, a floral welcome to our chief guest, Engineer Mohan Ramnathan. Prayer to Professor K. S. Rao. <laughs> Clarita to IGS President Dr. Anil Joseph. <laughs> Grishma to Principal Dr. Kripashankar. <laughs> Ayana to HOD Professor K. G. Gupta. Ms. Judith Fernandez to Chairman IGS Kova Chapter, Professor Punanand. <laughs> Ms. Priyanka to Secretary IGS Kova Chapter, Engineer Umesh Kolakani. <laughs> I also request Professor Nisha Nayak to give a flower to uh, Professor Madhav. And yeah, uh, Dr. Shiv Shankar, I, uh, I call Smita to give a bouquet or flowers to Shiv Shankar. And Jay Mohan sir, I request Sumitra, Dr. Sumitra to give a flower. And Ma'am Minimal. Madam Madhav and Madam Rao, I request uh, Sumitra ma'am and Isha ma'am to give the flowers. <coughs> and also, Sis Annapurna, Smita, please give flowers. Thank you. I invite Professor Punanan Savikar to formally welcome the dignitaries and the participants and also lay down the purpose and objectives of the sixth Dr. Victor Dimelo Goa lecture. Uh, good morning, everyone. A pleasant morning in Goa. These days, very nice cool temperature and festive season also in Goa. I welcome Amon Ramnathan, sir. Uh, President DFI India as a chief guest for this function. Professor K.S. Rao, sir, who is, uh, will be delivering 6th Victor Demelo lecture. Dr. Anil Joseph, President IGS. Gupta, sir, Principal Kripashankar, sir, Umesh Kulkarni. The resource persons for our program, uh, Dr. Amar Madhav, sir, Dr. Shivashankar, sir, Jayamon, sir, Annapurni, madam, and uh, Minimal, madam. I think one more felicity, Bharati, I think is on the way. Uh, she's most nearby. So she's coming by her own transportation, she may be reaching here. Uh, respected uh, faculty, delegates, students, okay, and office bearers of IGS and staff of civil department. I welcome you to this uh, special edition, we call it, because this year 
Indian Jyoti Limited persons for our programs. And since then, 2017, we are organizing this Victor de Mello lecture. But only due to some COVID, 2020, we were not permitted for any functions. So that year we couldn't conduct, but rest all years we conducted. And this is the sixth Victor de Mello lecture. It will be delivered by Professor K. S. Rao from uh, XIIT Delhi uh, in short while from now. In addition to this Victor de Mello lecture, we also started encouraging our students to take up the line of foundation engineering, geotechnical engineering. In our college, we have a geotechnical engineering branch that is ME in Masters in Foundation Engineering, started way back in 86, 85, 86. So 37 years we are having this branch running in our college. So this gold, we are uh, uh, this awarding gold medal to the ME Foundation topper. And for UG student, also, just to encourage them to take geotechnical subjects, because now geotechnical has uh, become only one subject. That is compulsory subject in fourth semester. But in fifth semester, it is offered as elective. But I think in our college, since last uh, four batches or five batches, it has been taken as all students are taking it. There is no other option. Students themselves are registering it. And we started awarding a prize to the topper in foundation and geotechnical engineering, a cash prize of 3,000 rupees. So this is one event. Second event is that uh, we have uh, this uh, woman in geotechnics that we started. We were first in India to start it as an exclusive event. So it was way back in 2018 when we started it, exclusive event Women Geotechnics. And then in ISE Bangalore, they started as a part of IGC 2018. And also I think it is there in Ramnathan sir, I think will agree with me. It is also there in WIDF, Women in Deep Foundations. Yeah, they also have a regular program. And now I think in IIT Chennai or somewhere, Chennai IGS, they are organizing a full event, full conference on WI. This, and the university, yeah, yeah. So this is what we are doing, and uh, I can see quite good number of uh, women ladies here assembled. So it's so nice, and I think what we have started will go much ahead. Uh, and the third event is uh, we have uh, since 2018, uh, IGC Indian Geotechnical Society was kind enough to offer us a membership of TC 107, that is Technical Committee 107. So that time it was laterites and lateritic soil. Now it is known as tropical residual soils. So from uh, India, myself, uh, Jaimon sir, from uh, Trivandrum, and uh, from uh, NIT, Suratkal, uh, Shiv Shankar sir, we three were representing. And we also conducted several events of TC-107. So we started, at Goa, we started conducting symposium on TC-107. So this is the second symposium. And we also conducted one national conference on uh, TC-107, that is laterites and lateritic soil. Because in Goa, we have a lot of lateritic soil and there are several problems associated. The One of the biggest problem was in uh, the new, new airport, Mopa. It was about to start and the, I think a PM was about to come maybe in weeks time. First landing, unofficial landing means not on the full runway. So they discovered on the runway area only a, a deep, uh, you can say, hollow cavity, wherein 200 loads of uh, rock were filled in that cavity. So that much problems we are having in this lateritic soils. So, and uh, learning that, we also started uh, Gaur College as research center offering PhD degrees. So we have five candidates working on lateritic soil. And just now the person who has made invocation, Govind Bhagat, is also our research scholar. He submitted his thesis and awaiting defense. So this is what we are doing in our college. And the three, these are the three events what we are doing. And Victor DeMello lectures, another uh, advantage is that every lecture, so whatever this video recording we are doing, that is available on Victor DeMello website. And the paper is published as a journal paper in the Journal of Soil, and uh, International Journal of Soils and Rock, published by Brazilian and uh, Portuguese geotechnical societies. So this is what status they have given to our lecture also. So that is a very nice thing. And uh, I think uh, after me also, the other chairmen who are coming, they will also follow the suit. And every year there will be several uh, this lectures for years to come. So this is what, uh, in short, I have told you about the three days activities we are going to have. Uh, a totally packed session, expert uh, speakers. And one more thing I will tell is that no speaker has said no to us for this any of the events. Whenever we organize at Goa, they are always there at a short notice. Ramnathan sir, Anil Jodhav sir. And these two people, I, I will not tell them what their expertise, everybody must have known. You must have known this control, implosion and all. So they are the 
expertise in India in this field. And apart from this, uh, one more thing I want to tell with uh, say high uh, gratitude and all. See, our students are not behind in any of the activities. Organizing any event, they are always with us. And now you can see their skills. Outside, you must have seen three nice statues bust of Victor Di Mello, uh, Vishweshwar sir, and uh, Abdul Kalam sir. So all these statues are made by our student, final year student Chandrakant Parab. He has made it. <laughs> Apart from that, uh, from our uh, recently Goa conducted 37th National Games. So one of the game archery was conducted in our college under leadership of principal sir. And I'm happy to tell that there are five medalists in our students. Our five students are the medalists. And one gold medalist, our civil student is right now here. Nitesh, please stand up. So Nitesh Zalmi is a civil student. He got gold medal in uh, uh, this, uh, what is that? Uh, martial arts. In martial arts, they will be honoring him also. So our students are excelling in all activities, right from academics, organizing technical events, sports, everywhere. So this is in short what we are having here. So I welcome you once again. And uh, you please enjoy your stay in Goa. I think one more uh, truck, uh, not truck, bus load of delegates are coming to this event. <laughs> bus is del del delayed. So that is my student, PhD student from Kolhapur. He's having student delegates, about 30 of them. They are on the way. Just maybe uh, some delay is there. They'll be reaching so shortly. So I'm very happy to see student participation here and delegates also. And I know more outside delegates couldn't come back, but there are several IGS activities are going on parallelly as a 75 year celebrations. So welcome once again, and please enjoy your stay. Please uh, enjoy the technical sessions. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I invite, invite HOD Professor K.G. Gupta to address the gathering. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the, the, the Jains in geotechnical engineering who are on the dais and also off the dais, faculty, then press, all the faculty members, students, and delegates. It is interesting to have all of you here. I think Professor Purnanand has named it as geoconclave. Why not we call it as Jain's geoconclave? All Jains are here of geotechnical engineering. That's really great. And we are always blessed with uh, sir being here and uh, very nice lectures. Everybody appreciates when Goa Engineering College Civil Engineering Department organizes. In last four months, we have made almost, this is fifth program that we are having. So that means almost one program every month and of this magnitude. It is not so easy to organize, to find out the availability and the schedule, to have them here. And I think it was not a problem for civil engineering department. Whenever we invite, they were ready to come. That is our, uh, we say that we are very fortunate. So not only this, whenever civil engineering department, it comes to the knowledge sharing, we are having a lot of connections with uh, knowledge partners like Instruct. Similarly, uh, adding to this, our college, our principal recently received an award from Aurangabad ISTE chapter, uh, ISTE headquarters that this is considered as the best college in Goa and Maharashtra region. I would like to thank all the faculty members who contributed for this. And then, the, if you look at the way that our programs have gone in, and really they are emerging like world-class programs, especially this particular program takes us to a very high levels. Every year that we do organize this Victor Demelo's lectures, and we have started this series, and it is very, very popular. And I must congratulate Professor Purnanand here for organizing this particular program. And uh, yesterday we have discussed a lot of things with uh, Madam, and she was 
uh, you know, very, very helpful to us. Madam, I welcome you especially for this program. And I wish that our students will be most benefited from PACA Ferry. We have deputed a lot of our students and uh, students are really benefited and we are also thankful to you in this regard. And look forward for more interaction with you and uh, developments in the college. And uh, IGS chapter of Goa is considered to be very active, I heard from Purnanand, it was discussed. And similarly, we have one uh, BIS chapter. This is also very active and it is considered at the national level. So these two activities of these chapters are really very good. And in addition to that, we have s s signed a lot of MOUs and no MOU is dry. All are active. That I wanted to say. And uh, the legacy of this department is to continue this and we would like to have your supports are always for the Goa Engineering College. So with this, I once again welcome you all to Goa Engineering College and hope everyone will enjoy the lectures. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I request Principal Dr. M. S. Kripa Shankar to address the gathering. Distinguished guests on the stage and off the stage, uh, particularly Professor Madhav, who is very special to all of us. And all the participants, uh, very warm welcome to GEC. Uh, I would like to share a couple of thoughts here on what is the future for uh, civil engineering in particular in the context of Goa University. Um, so what we have come up with under the national education policy is um, we have got two uh, very strong groups here. One is the structural engineering group and the other foundation engineering. So the foundation engineering will be renamed as the geotech uh, engineering. It will no longer be called foundation engineering. Uh, so that will be the major decision that will be coming through uh, to that. And the next very important thing that we have done in the national education policy is that students can specialize in structural engineering from the third semester onwards. So in the third semester when the student comes in, if we are able to mentor him, counsel him and tell him that, okay, start taking some courses which are in structural engineering and maybe in uh, uh, geotechnical engineering, he can start doing so. So he gets an additional 20 credits and if he is able to maintain 75% or higher, which will be equivalent CGPAs, we can do the computation, is he can get enrolled to PhD directly. So that is the provision that uh, NEP has made uh, provision. So you skip that master's degree program. So this has been now put into the ordinance of Goa University. And from the next uh, year, that is from the June 2020-24 batch, that is the 24 batch, uh, this will be available. I am very happy that we are all today here and in the past six years and ten years that we have been working here in Goa University, uh, whether it is the IGS and the other groups. We have created the stage, we have created the platform. Now the students who are going to come in will reap these benefits. So this will be the way to look forward. We may have to create a center for excellence also what uh, Professor Gupta ji was talking in the area of NDT. Similarly, further strengthen our geotech. Geotech, uh, maybe even uh, Mr. Joseph would be uh, better to make a statement how geotech across Asia is so very vast and very unique and very different and people face different uh, challenges. Just now he was mentioning he was in Korea, he was in maybe Pakistan and so many other places he was telling. So people have realized the complexities of, uh, you know, the geotech and geotech is going to grow. And then just yesterday we were sharing the information that our students from the mining engineering department were in Uttarkashi, Uttarakhand, and then they were taking drone and uh, lidar based images and they were trying to assess how the, you know, the slopes are slipping. Uh, and then how the ground forces can be supported. So we were all very happy yesterday that GEC students were part of the drone imaging process while the drilling process was being done. And to identify where to do the vertical drilling, they were trying to look at places, which is the angle, how to do it. And when they started drilling vertically, what started happening and then how uh, horizontal drilling location was, you know, they were trying to work out. So geotech offers a lot of challenges. We all. Uh, we'll see that in the future, the very fact that geotech is now, uh, you know, coming up into such a major subject really means that we should create opportunities for our students uh, to 
uh, you know, take up this very seriously from the very third semester onwards. I'll urge all the faculty members who are associated to create this environment so that they specialize in structural engineering and geotech, which are two strong areas of Goa College of Engineering. And on a lighter note, I still am still laughing when our Purnanan said a bus load. Civil engineers are used to defining things in truck load, bus load. <laughs> it is a civil engineering terminology. So we are expecting a bus load of uh, students who are going to join. Uh, I welcome them who are on the way. Uh, I hope you guys will have a wonderful time. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Smita to introduce IGS President, Dr. Anil Joseph. A very good morning to all. It is my privilege to introduce Dr. Anil Joseph, President IGS. Dr. Anil Joseph is the Managing Director of Geostructurals Limited, a leading foundation and structural consultancy firm based at Cochin. He has provided foundation and structural consultancy for more than 3,000 high-rise structures, including many landmark multi-storied and infrastructure projects in India and abroad in the last 30 years. His design of Nippon Toyota showroom at Kalamarsari uh, Platinum Mall at Maradu, Lulu Grand Hyatt Hotel and Convention Center, Bulgati Island at Kochi. He won the ICI Ultratech Award for Outstanding Concrete Structures of Kerala in the building category in the year 2012, 17 and 18 respectively. He is the Managing Director of SICON Limited, a construction firm specialized in the execution of the pile foundations and also the director of Engineers Diagnostic Center Limited, a firm specialized in geotechnical investigation and retrofitting works. He was awarded PhD from NIT Calicut on his work on pre-compression of soft marine clays. He is the president of Indian Geotechnical Society for the year 2023 and 2024 and is a national council member of Institution of Engineers India in civil divisions for the term 2021 to 2025. He is the governing council member of the Indian Association of Structural Engineers. He is also the chairman of the Indian Concrete Institute, Kochi Center, vice chairman of Builders Association of India, Kochi Chapter, and governing council member of Builders Association of India. He is representing India in International Technical Committee, TC220, on film monitoring in geomechanics, and in Asian Technical Committee, ASRTC14, on smart observations method. He is the immediate past president of Association of Structural and Geotechnical Consultants, Kerala, immediate past state president of Gratu uh, Graduate Association of Civil Engineers, the past president of Association of Piling Specialists, member of Association of Contracting Engineers, executive committee member of Deep Foundation Institute India, managing committee member of Kerala Management Association, and adjunct faculty of Albertian Institute of Science and Technology coaching. As per the directions of Supreme Court, uh, it was decided to raise five high-rise uh, structures at Maradu Kochi and Dr. Anil Joseph was appointed as a geotechnical and structural expert in the technical committee by the government of Kerala in 2019. Dr. Anil Joseph is also involved in various social activities such as the vice president of the regional sports center Kochi. He is an active Rotarian and uh, was the former assistant governor of Rotary District 3021 and past president of Rotary Club of Kochi downtown. He was one of the among the top 10 Diamond Hall of, of Fame New Age Icon Change Makers 2020. He is married to Rina Anil, the director of Sikons Private Limited, and is blessed with two children. Uh, son Anil uh, Akhil, who is doing his PhD in Geotechnical Engineering from Texas A&M University, USA, and daughter Alina Anil doing her MS in earthquake engineering from University of California, Los Angeles. This is a very high profile, sir. And I had the privilege of meeting, sir, and interacting with, sir, at the Indian Geotechnical Conference at Kerala. And I must say that was the best conference organized. I welcome you, sir, over to you.
Thank you very much and very good morning all of you. It's a stage where we have such illuminary people and generally wherever I go, I talk about Indian Geotechnical Society, but then since these two illuminaries are there, I am not good enough to talk about the Indian Geotechnical Society. The chief guest of the day, Mohan Ramnathan sir, he is a very good friend and also a partner in demolition. He is a guru of demolition in the country. And we have our Bhishma Jaya of Foundation Engineering, Madhav sir here, who was the past vice president of ISSMG. The man who served maximum to make Indian Geotechnical Society what it is, Dr. K. S. Rao sir, 10 years as secretary, 2 years as national president, and every, every bylaws is by God. And whenever I have a doubt, I call both of them to get the guidance to how to take it forward. And other distinguished uh, dignitaries on the dais, the man who made all these possible Purnat Savakar sir, excellent job and wonderful activities we happen here and the excellent activities happening in the College of Engineering Goa, very happy and delighted to know that. And uh, Mohan Ramadan sir was telling that the time which was allocated to you is already over by the time it was you are introduced. So <laughs> anyway, I will take two, three minutes of time to share certain thoughts which I have regarding this wonderful profession we have a very beautiful element called foundation or most beautifully like Madhav Sar's court I generally place everywhere. The moment you move from structures to soil, it varies both horizontally as well as vertically and all the theories cannot be predicted and that becomes an art. So then you take our history long back, we see that Carl Tarsagi, the father of soil mechanics who was not at all a civil engineer, he was a mechanical engineer who derived all the theories in say, our geotechnical engineering and make us possible to bring up solution to the problems and he understood the necessity of meeting together, discussing and debating this subject which is unknown, like Madhav sir says, it's unpredictable. So it was worked out and in 1935 he made the Vienna Society of Geotechnical Engineers which had the first meeting there and which paved the way to form the first international conference on geotechnics and foundation engineering happening in 1937, 36. And the second international conference happened in 1948 at Rotterdam where five people from India visited and after that they came back and started the Indian Geotechnical Society and here we are celebrating the 75th anniversary and, go and who can resist coming to Goa? So they are telling that whenever they call all the people, sir, everybody jumps and everybody is ready. It doesn't have to matter. It was a long time invitation or the last minute invitation. Everybody loves to be in Goa and Goa is where the whole India comes to celebrate. And let me take two, three minutes to share certain things. Yes, foundation, very challenging, unpredictable, and we need to standardize that. It's a very difficult task. But then we, there should be regulation. So I generally talk about three points for especially the students are coming in our bus, they have to join us. But for the students, <coughs> our problem with engineering is very simple. One, we are taught swimming without going to swimming pool. So you have to go to the site, understand what is happening there. Yeah, we have the MTech students here. Understand happening here and that is where this. Engineering is the art of applying knowledge into practice. It's not a theory. So if you don't do that, it is like learning swimming from this book, moment you see water, you cannot dump, even though you know all the, all the theory. So you should have that art of getting into the water and kicking your legs to understand. And many of you know swimming, no? Goa, most of you know swimming. So you will have, you will drink some water before you learn how to swim. So that process has to go through and this is more complicated. And Kaltar Saki itself has told that its foundation engineering is an art and not a defined science. So understand what, that's a complicated problem. It, it cannot be copied. That's the beauty of the subject. I practice as a structural engineer. I am known as a structural engineer in the country and joining as a demolition man along with uh, Mohan Ramadhan sir in the process in the country, uh, we do create as well as we do demolish. But then most important aspect is that structures can be copied. If I do a very beautiful structure, I can copy it to some other place ditto. We don't, I don't have to bother about. Come to soil, you don't know what is varying in the adjacent mode. I always believe that geotechnical engineers are magicians. You get five data, which is one in five lakh representation, and you are supposed to extrapolate the remaining four lakh ninety-nine thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine to predict what it is behaving. So don't blindly believe the soil in data. Have your own concept of mechanism and develop that, and then it becomes a passion in you. 
then the art any art what you do the more you draw say when you start learning we draw in two line four line unless and until you get the shapes then you don't need that anymore and it's like an artist drawing sketches we create structures so it has to happen accordingly so one don't stick only to the theory go to the field to understand what is happening second which i don't know how much you people have the biggest problem in india we don't have a regularization of engineers any tom dick and harry can practice as engineers i was recently in australia i had a driver who was taking me around from the airport he was basically an indian origin i was chatting with him he told that he's doing uh, studies in carpentry and i just wonder what is there to study in carpentry he then our over our period of half an hour drive he told me that it's a three year course in the evening he come to the airport to pick the people and then he make his money out of that and he study that it's a three year carpentry course he has to undergo he has to undergo exam to get become a licensed carpenter and the most important part i uh, learned from him is that once he complete that next year he has to renew the license he has to undergo 18 hours of continuous professional development to be a carpenter look at our country we have a country with so much of abandoned engineers civil engineers not getting paid and 85% of the construction happening in the country is still unengineered there is a not a qualified engineer at the site who has got a license to do that everybody other than an engineer claims that he is an engineer and everybody grabs our opportunity I and mean, my our best friend is architects they know how to make beautiful structure everything but then they demand that i want only 30 cm column for 10 story building i want only 1 uh, 1 meter by 1 meter foundation for whatever it is so they don't know and we have to educate them we have to make sure that our work is done by us not by anybody else so we are fighting for the engineers bill in the parliament i am very happy to tell you that recently in the last national building code which is the guiding code is getting under revision and being a committee member we are able to get a mandate that any building more than 15 meter height should have a geotechnical engineer investigation and it has to be approved approved by a team and it is not only the geotechnical in investigation is mandatory the drawing which is made of foundation has to be signed by a geotechnical engineer on record so you will have a lot of opportunity don't jump civil engineering and go to something else so but it is in the only in the draft state we need more voices to fight for that 2025 it will become a reality and geotechnical engineering profession will be demand but we have to make sure that we are doing the right job and we should be accountable which has to come from the engineers bill in the parliament and certainly we will see that our fellow computer engineer get so much money and we civil engineers get so poorly paid it will start jumping only thing because we are not asking for money and we are not good enough to ask for money so that is where we have to bridge the gap which is possible don't go to tcs and infosys 80% of time you become a data entry person instead of that i say the revolution is happening artificial intelligence and machine learning you bring that to civil engineering we have to go we have to change a lot my son is working on artificial intelligence in civil engineering and we always argue with each other on the technical ground and he says if tesla can drive a car without a driver the future is like that with five lakh images i will predict what is the soil and i don't need your company to do the job so i know that my future is bleak the disruption in technology is going to happen because we learn our bread and butter from this geotechnical investigation process and writing soil investigation report but madhav sir will agree that it's not that easy the technology will take its own sweet time because geotechnical engineering is such a challenging and complex subject and it will take time stick to your profession don't jump to tcs and infosys yes we need people with tcs and infosys but let us be make sure that we are doing our thing and again we need peer review of our design we have now come up with a code as member of the indian association of structural engineers we have come up with the is code of practice how to do the wetting and peer review and again one thing we should learn that let us not give economical solutions and let us charge well engineers are poorly paid because engineers don't know how to demand money so increase the demand of money thanks to mohan ramadan sir demolition is a good profession because i get 20 times more payment when i do a, a demolition than when i do a design so there is a, because he only knows the trick so he only few people know the trick so he he gets much more money than me i get 20 times more so he is the one mastermind behind that he gets a lot of other opportunity and we talked about the uttarakhand tunnel 
41 lives were there fighting and we don't know what is happening. Lack of investigation, lot of rules. There are rules people don't implement and there is no action against them. There is no action against them is the policy. We should have a policing team. We should have a structural inspectorate. We should have a foundation inspectorate because there is no sense in retrofitting later on. Let us start creating that and the change won't happen overnight. It has to start from within you. You are the person or the future of the country is there. You are the person who have to bring in the change. And if we all believe that, we, if we all wish for the change, it won't happen. We have to make the change. My last thought process. I'm closing with this. I am a structural engineer practicing and proud of being a structural engineer also. I travel across the globe, maybe in the last 15 years, to see some of the most beautiful structures in the world. How to, uh, and every time the more I go, now the gap is getting lesser and lesser. You saw if you go to America, you see the Empire State Building. They did the foundation in 1929, March 30th. They inaugurated it on 1930, April 1st. 367 days. 103 story building. India in now 2023, we don't have 100 story building. Who will create that? You. You have to make it happen. So it is your future and India is the most populous country and the biggest growing economy of the world. So this is bound to happen. Stick to your profession. We are almost 100 years behind America. We have to catch up in the next 10 to 15 years where it is going to come in and the new generation has to happen. Every time I go to China, in two years the China horizon changes. So I always dream one day all these Americans, Europeans and the Chinese, no, they should come to India, see the most beautiful and glorious structures in the world and has to be created by the young sparkling eyes in front of me. There are less, the, the remaining is in the bus. bus. So <laughs> let them all join us. And I am sure that India is going to make the change and we are going to be the world leader. Let us be proud of being civil engineer and be part of the nation building movement. Thank you and Jay Hind. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Vilma Fernandez to introduce Professor K. S. Rao. Thank you, Shweta. Uh, so as requested by sir, yes, I will shorten it. Yes, but there, he has got such a big reputation that I don't know how to shorten it. Okay, so Dr. Ra yes, yes. <laughs> Dr. Rao is a professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Delhi and has obtained his MIM Tech from IIT Kanpur and PhD from IIT Delhi in in 80 and the year 1980 and 84 respectively. His research spans over 42 years and he has uh, uh, been on engineering um, and it is on engineering behavior of rocks, mass, stability of slopes, underground structures, foundation, site characterization, numerical modeling, seismic hazard and microsimulation of mega cities. He has supervised as much as uh, 28 PhDs and 195 MTech theses. Professor Rao has traveled extensively and has collaborative research with several universities. He is a member of several technical committees and academic boards. He is an honorary fellow of Indian Geotechnical Society and has contributed extensively to the growth of IGS for more than 25 years with in various capacities. Professor Rao has been the editor of Indian Geotechnical Journal and Indian Geotechnical Society News. He was the president of Indian Geotechnical Society during 2011-12 uh, and president of uh, Indian Ge uh, Geotechnical Society for Engineering Geology during 2018 and 19 respectively. Professor Rao has delivered the 41st IGS annual lecture for the year 2019 and was also con conferred with a coveted uh, Kekelman Award for Outstanding Contribution in Geotechnical Engineering. He has also delivered the 8th IGS Ferro Corps Tazagi Oration in 2022. I would also like to state here that he has provided solutions for more than 380 professional consultancies in the areas of 
soil, rock, and earthquake geotechnical engineering, and his research, uh, recent geotechnical modeling work for assessing the stability of Chenab and Anjikhad bridge slopes has cleared the way for the construction of Jammu Baramulla rail link of national importance. He is also the consultant of Pir Panchal Rotang, Zed Mor, and Zojila tunnels. Welcome you, sir. Uh, very good morning to all of you and uh, off the dais and uh, on the dais dignitaries. <coughs> Many things have already uh, discussed and told about uh, geotechnical engineering, etc. Uh, at this stage, you know, so that I don't have to uh, say much, but however, I like Goa, like any other uh, uh, people, and uh, I like this college. So I used to come, you know, so the 25 years back uh, to this college, and uh, I used to have a lot of interactions with the faculty, and some of the best faculty, you know, say uh, they are part of this college as well as you know, so they are good friends to us, and we are contemporary when we are doing the PhD at IIT Delhi as well. Uh, yeah, uh, you said that you know, say so the chapter has been. Uh, given the permission to start in Osset in 2012. Uh, much before that, in Osset, the five years or so, uh, much before that, uh, uh, we know the potential of the uh, this particular place. So there being in the IGS, uh, uh, we uh <coughs> decided to, you know, say the formulate a chapter uh, in this region. Um, at last, you know, so the, you have got it, and you know, so the congratulations for that, and uh, you are doing, uh, Fantastic, you know, so the work. Uh, your activities are matchless. Um, of course, you are very partial, you know, so towards the women. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <coughs> your programs are going very well. And the, of course, you know, so the highlight is, you know, say so the Professor D. Miller's uh, uh, lecture. And I'm really fortunate that, you know, say so that lecture is being delivered, will be delivered, you know, so the soon. Um, I was uh, fortunate to have some interactions, you know, so the, when I was doing the PhD uh, with uh, Professor DiMello. Um, <coughs> during some of the international conferences, uh, so when they travel to India, and the conference are being organized, you know, so the at IIT Delhi or in Delhi. So I used to do the correspondence, you know, so with these big uh, shots. So I vividly remember, you know, so the asking the photographs of uh, D Professor DiMello and uh, uh, Mrs. DiMello uh, to be included, you know, so the, in a maybe pre-conference brochure or something. So I had the, con the very good, you know, so the interaction at the time. She so wrote, you know, so the beautiful uh, 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 the letter. Uh, I'm st that letter, you know, so that I'm still uh, preserving, you know, so the with me while sending, you know, so the photographs of uh, both Mrs. and uh, himself. Um, your soil is uh, very close to me, the laterite. Uh, the laterite contains uh, uh, helicite clay mineral, so which is a metaform of, you know, so the kyanite clay, and it is having a tubular uh, structure. You do the laterite for making the bricks and construction, of the boundary walls and even the major structures uh, historically. The word laterite came, you know, say from your region. So like in Kerala, uh, <coughs> Kochi, uh, and these places, you know, so the letter, letter means, you know, so the, it is a Latin word. Uh, Bukhanen is actually the formulated that uh, because the meaning of it is, you know, so the brick, because you are using, you know, so this material as a brick, uh, so thereby uh, the latter term came from, you know, say this particular uh, region. So it is having a, a why, you know, say that you cut the into blocks and put it, you know, say for the drying and use it, you know, uh, for the construction. So what is that, you know, say the gives the strength after drying it. So that research, you know, so I did it, and uh, very exciting, you know, say the results. So if, uh, anybody who talks about the latter, uh, so I am very. <coughs> uh, excited. 
So first time in India, these lateritic soils, uh, helicite tubes, uh, so corrugated tubes will be there, you know, say, because in the center, you have the OH, OH molecule will be there, you know, say, because of the surface tension, so the, the hexagonal flakes, you know, so they, they will get rolled up and, you know, so the present, you know, say, in, four, in tubes. And once you dry it, you know, so the, uh, it forms a beautiful uh, bonding uh, uh, for the, for, for the uh, soil. So uh, thereby I have, you know, so the very good relation, you know, so the, to this particular uh, soil and the land. The Anil uh, started mentioning, you know, so the tunnel, so that is another subject, you know, so which is very exciting to me. And uh, I keep telling to the students that, you know, so the future is underground. The future is underground. Students, please mark it. <coughs> So we have, you know, say the fairly spoiled the surface. So we will be putting, you know, say all the structures, you know, so the underground. So they are better, they are safe, they are good. Barring, of course, you know, so the if we mess it up, you know, so we will be having the accidents. The one which, you know, so the recently happened, of course, uh, mm, mm, our tributes to the the people who trapped and you know, so the they came out uh, uh, nicely. But it is a mess we created it. We keep always telling that, you know, so the Himalayas are very treacherous, very weak, collapsing. This is all nonsense, you know, so that is our ignorance because we won't actually study anything. We won't understand the material and the conditions. And without doing that, you know, so then uh, we keep actually making the tunnels. So, so the tunnels are bound to collapse. So, um, I don't want to reveal anything further you know, so the, on this particular thing, but it is you know, say, uh, uh, our way of working. If the working is actually not really uh, <coughs> as required, so then this type of accidents is actually going to happen. So thereby, sky is the limit for the geotechnical engineering. So a lot of you know, so the things one can actually do it. Uh, all my best wishes to the young students. So, so please be there you know, so as uh, advisor by Anil and uh, civil engineering is great and uh, uh, you can do very well. All my best wishes to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now I request Professor Sumitra to take over the felicitation program. Shweta. On behalf of IGS Goa Local Chapter and Goa College of Engineering, I welcome the dignitaries, guests, delegates, parents, students, and all the faculty members, all invited guests. Excellence is potential chiseled into more perfect state through vision, dedication, and determination. Like the circle, the pursuit of excellence has no end. Let's move on with the awarding three of our students who have won accolades in studies and sports. Each one's achievement is commendable in its own right. At IGS Goa, like Goa chapter, we have the tradition of awarding the first award type, that is students scoring the highest aggregate marks in the subjects of geotechnical engineering semester four and foundation engineering elective semester five amongst the two engineering colleges that offer civil engineering degree, that is Don Bosco, Don Bosco College of Engineering and Goa College of Engineering. This award of scoring the highest aggregate marks in foundation engineering and geotechnical engineering subjects is a prize money of rupees 3000 and a certificate of appreciation and this year, this feat has been achieved by the student of Goa College of Engineering, Mr. N Mitesh Siddesh Keni. <laughs> to present this award, I, I have the honor to invite respectable president of Indian Geotechnical Society, Dr. Anil Joseph Sir.
Many, many congratulations to Mitesh Siddesh Kehli on receiving this well-deserved award. Mitesh scored a total of 130 out of 150 in the geotechnical engineering subject and 117 out of 100 in the foundation engineering elective subject. 125, sorry, one, 117 out of 125. Our second winner, second recipient is the winner of gold medal certificate and a certificate of appreciation on securing the highest marks in Master of Engineering Foundation and the recipient, recipient of this award is Mr. Vignesh Kushta Gaude. He has topped amongst, he has topped the MA Foundation Engineering Program amongst eight students and he worked under the dissertation topic, uh, dissertation studies under the guidance of Professor Nisha P. Naik. I request uh, respectable president of uh, IGS Dr. Anil Joseph to please honor the recipient with the award. Congratulations to Vignesh. He is accompanied by his father, Mr. Uh, Kushta Gaude. We congratulate father and son for this achievement. This year, Goa State served the host for organizing the National Games of India 2023. We celebrate the remarkable feat achieved by one of our students the athletic sport, in the athletic sports event, Square Martial Art under the category 62 kg fight. Our students secured gold medal amongst the 13 gold medals won by Goa. This athletic ac accomplishment demonstrates his physical prowess as well as his ability to succeed on a national platform. We celebrate the victory of Mr. Nitesh Vitu Jalmi and award him with a <laughs> memento. I request Respectable engineer Mohan Ramnathan, sir, to please honor the recipient with this award. Heartiest congratulations to all the three award winners. Uh, I request uh, Mr. Mitesh Siddesh Kenny to say a few words on this occasion about his journey in this college. Good morning, respected guests, of dignitaries and students. Uh, this college is really has helped me throughout my journey, and uh, uh, my professors especially have guided me throughout this course of civil engineering, which is in fact even during our first years, our professors have told us civil engineering is a very well-known branch and has a good future, which has in fact. Accomplished, promoted me to take it even for the studies, especially for now in final year. We have also taken a project related to foundation engineering, the foundations, excavation supporting methods. So, yes, uh, geotechnical is in fact a quite a good field, and we plan on pursuing it even further. I thank this college and my faculty members, all of my teachers, for helping me throughout this journey. Thank you. Thank you, Mitesh. I too feel proud of you because one of the subjects taught <laughs> was geotechnical engineering where you excelled. Thank you for your speech. I request uh, Mr. Vignesh Gaude 
to share his experiences. A very good morning to all of you on the right side of us. As a student, I receive an award for ac academic excellence is like a, a dream come true. This was not planned yesterday and fulfilled today. A lot of dedication, hard work and determination has happened for so many months to stand on this track. All the efforts found meaning today through this medal. It would be unfair not to thank each and every individual behind my success. Without their guidance and support, I would be never able to ac accomplish this. This time, it's time for me to thank all the people who have supported me from bottom of my heart. The dream of receiving this award came true only because of motivation and support I received from my professor and especially my dissertation guide, Dr. P Nisha P. Nye. The reason why I want to thank firstly because fundamentally they are the ones who brought me into shape. Secondly, I want to thank my beloved parents who stood by my side for all the times. Let me mention let me mention that I will never able to pay them back for what they have done for my growth. This medal is just a uh, glimpses of my gratitude towards them. Finally, this is unforgettable moment has it will always re remind me hard work, consistency, and patience always pays off. Thank you so much. That was a beautiful speech by Mr. Vignesh. We too are very proud of you. Uh, I request uh, Nitesh Jalvi to say a few words. Good morning, present guest here. It is a great, as a student of a civil engineer, it is an inspiration that I can be a, can do more great after knowing your achievements. It is a, thank you so much. Thank you, Nitesh. And I would like to grab this opportunity to give a short message. Before we conclude, a short message to the students that they should embody the values of compassion, empathy, and social responsibility, and contribute in creating a better world for all. And this is exactly what is done by our uh, students of Mining Engineering Department, Mr. Amo Gurekar and Mr. Uh, uh, Mulla. Sorry, Mr. Asif Mullah. Uh, today, as we celebrate academic and sports achievement, let us also recognize the brave souls who exemplify the spirit of service and dedication. Their courage in the face of adversity has saved 41 lives. Let's extend our heartfelt appreciation to Mr. Amok Gudekar and Mr. Asif Mullah for their valor. Thank you, one and all, for your gracious presence in this function. Thank you all. Yes. Yeah, and uh, these students have traveled a journey from Government Polytechnic uh, Bicholim, and we are uh, very lucky to have one of their professors here, Mr. Uh, e. R. Reddy, Aymakar Reddy. <laughs> Thank you. We come to the conclusion of this function. I request uh, Mr. V Mitesh, Vignesh, and Nitesh to please join us for a photograph here. Oh. Thank you all for your participation in this award winning ceremony. Uh, we can. Thank you, ma'am, and congratulations to all the students. Now. We'll break for tea. Few. I'm, it's a quite an honorable job to present a life sketch of such a legendary personality, Dr. Victor Di Mello. Dr. Victor Di Mello was a Brazilian geotechnical engineer. He was born in Panji in Goa which was under Portuguese rule that time on May 14, 1926. He attended British 
boarding school in India at Bangalore and moved to Boston in 1944. His academic performance was excellent in school, in college, and also all the competitive exams that he attended or answered. He obtained both his B.Sc. and M.Sc. in 1946 and his doctoral degree in 1948 from MIT and Professor D.W. Taylor was his supervisor. He immigrated to Brazil in 1949 to be a Brazilian. These are his uh, uh, photographs during his uh, college days. His professional career, in his professional career, he first joined Department of Hydroelectric Power in uh, Brazil. In 1951, he joined Geotechnica. He returned to MIT in 1966 as a senior visiting professor. He was the founding, founding member of Brazilian Society of Soil Mechanics and president from 1964 to 1966. He settled in Brazil in 1949 and in 1950 he was one of the founders of the Brazilian Geotechnical Society. He was president of ABMS Vice President of ISRM and President of ISS MFE. He started his career as an individual consultant after that. His uh, research contributions include more than 140 papers. Uh, there is a website, uh, it's shown on the screen, it's uh, www.drvictorfbdemello.com.br. The website is active from which all the contents, including the biography book that is written on him, can be downloaded. What is shown on the screen is a screenshot of the website. There is a link to download the biography book. We also have a hard copy of the biography book that's uh, shown, uh, that's kept here. Uh, this is the hard copy of the biography. Uh, The, there are uh, there is there are lecture series in his name. That's Dimelo lecture. So all the lectures, one after they are delivered, the video links as well as the paper is uploaded on the uh, website. Uh, in that includes also our Dr. Victor Dimelo Goa lectures. All the lectures are available on this website. This is the of course the cover of the book. The contributions are immense, meaning it is not very easy to uh, say, his, uh, say about his contributions in a short time. Dr. Victor DiMello developed a philosophy of foundation design that incorporated both common sense and sound theory. He questioned a number of conventional design approaches and pointed out their shortcomings. He was highly critical of codes that were poorly conceived and inflexible and that led to uneconomical design. Considerable research has been carried out since 1969 to improve our ability to predict pile capacity and load settlement behavior. Some success has been achieved in predicting load settlement behavior of single piles. There were many shortcomings that he identified in design methods. Uh, these were his uh, uh, five design principles. In fact, uh, his uh, rich words, his rich lectures have been very nicely documented. These are the five design principles he proposed during the 17th Rankine lecture that he had delivered. He, there, were, uh, there are many of his messages which have been documented. Some of these are uh, shown on the screen. This, this was the message he, has, he had given during the 6th African Regional Conference. Uh, there, there was his address, presidential address in San, San Francisco. This was during the Terzaghi oration in 1994. His major, uh, there were many recognitions to his credit. He was distinguished with the Terzaghi Award of the ABMS on two occasions in 1966 and 1978. He delivered Rankine lecture in UK in 1977 and the second Manuel Rocha uh, lecture in Portugal in 1985 and the fourth Pacheco da Silva, uh, da Silva lecture in Brazil in the year 2000. 
the Brazilian and Portuguese geotechnical societies established the Victor de Mello lecture. The first one was being delivered by Professor John Burland in Coimbra in Portugal in, on April 7th in 2008. He was international consultant and advisor for several projects across right? uh, the landslide hazard zoning, Paraibuna Dam, Tite River, tunnel crossing project and the very famous leaning tower of Pisa. Our, our Goa chapter, that's IGS Goa chapter, we have established uh, Dr. Victor Di Mello Goa lecture also in the year 2017 in recognition of Dr. Victor Di Mello. The lectures, the first lecture was delivered by Professor M. R. Madhav. The second lecture was delivered by Dr. Luis Guillem Di Mello, his son. The third lecture, Professor Pedro Sico Pinto. Fourth lecture by Professor A. S. Balasubramaniam. And the fifth lecture was delivered by Professor Roger Frank. Today we, sh we are having the sixth Dr. Victor Di Mello lecture, which will be delivered by Professor K. S. Rao. Uh, all this uh, information has been obtained from these uh, sources. There are many docu documents available on the website. All of you are requested to uh, visit the website and download the biography book that is available there. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I request Professor K. S. Rao to garland the photo of Dr. Victor Di Mello and deliver a lecture on development of a large direct shear facility for geotechnical characterization and stability <laughs> assessment of gold mine dumps. is working I think so yeah so uh, very good morning to all of you I'm really thankful for the IG, <coughs> IGS Goa uh, chapter uh, to award this uh, sixth uh, Dr. Victor Di Milo uh, lecture uh, <coughs> uh, on me and I am really delighted you know so that to do uh, the same uh, I am going to take up you know, so the, uh, a fairly um, <coughs> known subject, uh, but for the unknown areas, you know, so its applications. Development of a large direct shear uh, facility for geotechnical characterization and stability assessment of open mine dumps. So large is important <coughs> because direct shear facility we all uh, uh, familiar. Similarly, the geotechnical characterization is also very familiar area and the stability as well for assessing, you know, say the slopes. But for its application, you know, say for the mine dumps uh, is uh, uh, slightly uh, new. These dumps are not uh, landfills. These dumps are actually having a different variety of uh, material. So that's what actually I'm going to deal with so today. As you know, like uh, uh, <coughs> India is the third, the, the highest uh, coal producing uh, country. And uh, after the China and USA, the cent Coal India Limited uh, produces 80, 82 percent of coal uh, in the country 
which is organized in, uh, the, in seven subsidiaries and uh, one mine planning uh, uh, station in Osei at CMPDL Ranchi. So, which is uh, spread across in also the eight states. So, the locations of uh, the coal mines, normally the coal mines uh, spread in the river valley basins. So, you can see the thick uh, uh, dark color which is indicating in also the different coal mine zones. Normally, the coal is uh, extracted, you know, say the through the open cast mining, and if it is, you know, say the very deep, you know, say the we need to do the underground mining. So when you excavate, uh, so there is a lot of uh, uh, other rock material, you know, say the will be there. So the ratio between uh, the rock and the coal, so that is really the main issue, because the rock surrounding material will be much, much larger volume, so then the coal that is being, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> extracted. So as it is indicated that, you know, so the open excavations, you know, so the can be done up to 200 uh, uh, feet below. And if the coal mine is, you know, so they're going much deeper, so then we need to do the underground mining. So in India, 90% of the total coal production is being done under the open cast mining, so thereby we will be producing a lot of mine waste that requires you know, say the stabilization. If you see the sequence of uh, the mining activity in this, uh, <clears throat> the area can be you know, say forested under, under which you, know, say you have the coal. The dark blue line is indicating you know, say the, the coal seam. So the coal seam you know, so the normally uh, you know, so they are having some thickness, you know, so they may be 5 to 6 meters, you know, so they are thick, uh, going linearly. And there are other formations which are actually there, you know. So to excavate that, you know, so they in the forest area or, you know, say so the may be non-forested area. If it is a forested area, so we start the mining like that. So you keep actually the cutting, so creating the slopes so, and then keep deepening it. And the second step is removal of the bower burden and you know, so they put it on the sides. So the material which is actually the excavated that will be put. So we create the external dumps. So once we, <coughs> uh, the cavity is actually the keep or the excavation is actually becoming more deeper and deeper. So within the mine area you will be able to uh, store the, the material as well. So thereby you have you know, so the the internal dumps, so there are two variety of dumps, one is actually the external dumps, so the other one is you know, so the internal dump. So that is how actually the mining is actually the going to proceed and uh, we, <coughs> uh, the, the dump area is uh, keep increasing it. So eventually once you reach you know, so the, to the, uh, to the uh, you know, so the maximum depth, so beyond which you know, so uh, open cast uh, excavation is not you know, so the feasible, so then we will be abandoning, abandoning the, the mine and some amount of treatment you know, so the must be done you know, so for the abandoned uh, mine. So technical and you know, so the biological uh, reclamation is actually needs to do it you know, so the, uh, once the mine is actually the closed. So uh, this is the, uh, the <coughs> The context, you know, so the, my lecture will be <coughs> spreading. Okay, let's see, like, you know, so the <coughs> when you when you start actually the taking the 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 the, the mining or the the material, the coal, I indicated that you know, so the ratio is very important. That ratio is actually known as the. Uh, Stripping of the stripping of the mine, so the stripping ratio is very important. So the <coughs> waste material is, you know, so the is much larger percentage, and if it is, you know, say one is to two, so it will be very ideal. So that means one percentage of coal coming out, you know, so the uh, for the excavation of, you know, so the two 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 two, uh, uh, you know, say so the the ratio. Uh, of the waste that is, you know, so the economical normally happens. So, but if the ratio is actually the going, you know, so the much larger, 
so then it becomes you know, so the major challenge so the optimum stable uh, dump slope dimensions you know so during and after the mining operations are the industry requirements worldwide so whether the mine should be operatable or not you know say so that depends upon you know say so what is the waste that is actually the going to come out uh, 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 the, from the mine so if you see that you know say so the uh, start from the be beginning you know say so the if you create a flatter slope so the better stability is there so that we all know it but uh, flatter slope requires you know so the larger area so if you take you know so the larger area the permanent area is actually the get locked up and then thereby you will be sacrificing it you know so the some amount of coal because the coal seam is actually the dipping inside the strata and if you are covering you know so the, with the with the waste dumps so then you won't be able to uh, go further down below the waste so thereby what you do is normally you know so the temporarily you create the, the dump and then subsequently you know so the you again you know move it to the 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 another area so the which is actually the going to be costing you know say so the lot permanent locking up of the huge quantity of the coal inside the earth you know so the is is going to happen so the steeper the slopes if you do it we all know it you know so increase the potential of the failure and uh, then what we should do you know so the uh, uh, a slope which is uh, economically acceptable and then accommodate you know, so uh, the area of you know so the leased area if the leased area is available you know so there is no issue because the the land is already acquired by you so thereby you can you know so the uh, uh, put the waste on that so it should be structurally safe so these three conditions you know so they should uh, you should you know so the meet uh, for creating you know say so this waste uh, 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 the dumps so how do you do it so definitely we will be no requiring you know geotechnical characterization and uh, geotechnical characterization on small uh, uh, small size you know say the uh, particulate material uh, is not you know so the suits us so what it requires is you know say the illa because the material is actually the having the very large size so you need you know say the large size testing equipment uh, especially you know say the for the slope uh, uh, you know say the stability assessment uh, you need you know say the the cohesion properties and then you know say the the frictional properties of the material requires so if the materials are actually the large size we don't have you know so the any mechanics see soil mechanics and you know so the are works up to a particular you know say the 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 uh, the size of the particles maybe you know so the sand so if it goes you know so the gravel cobble or the boulders you don't have any mechanics that is one of the reasons you know so the why we fail you know say so the landslide landslide assessment because the material which is actually the involved there you know so the is very very large so do we have you know so the a typical laboratory scenario if you see it you know in soil mechanics in all the institutions you know so you have a a direct shear test is actually the conducted you know say the 6 by 6 centimeter square isn't it so that is a small if the particle size is you know so the very very large you know so the what do you do it can we do the uh, a, a linear expo uh, 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 explosion you cannot actually do that so uh, so there by the need of you know say the designing of the large size uh, uh, dire shear uh, the, the the mission so uh, the other issues are there you know say like the conventional laboratory scale testing and the engineering judgment of the material which is involved so that is not you know say the assessed properly and also the dynamic uh, uh, loadings of this these you know say the slopes that is are not known then the representative overburden samples are not you know so the tested because different mines you know so the different rock uh, profiles will be there so thereby uh, not only the size uh, not only the gradation so but also you know so the its composition etc is different every mine is actually the different so thereby the mine materials are not not been you know so the tested 
So uh, ultimately, this leads to the overestimation of the shear strength of the overburden, you know, material, triggering the slope instability or the stability problems, you know, so the, in the open cast mines. So, so you dump the material, but then you know, so the accidents are actually the going to happen. So which will be very uh, <coughs> colossal. So uh, this leads to the overestimates of the shear strength of the OB material. So uh, as you, uh, as we discussed, the, so triggering the slope instability. So internal dumps, uh, uh, the normally you know, so if the area is available, minimize the rehandling of the OB material and are efficient, you know, say in utilization of the available land. Uh, but external dam, uh, OB materials. Uh, 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 handling is, you know, so the uh, difficult. There is another two things, you know, so the end dumping and, you know, so the, the push dumping. So if you see that, you know, so the end dumping is, you know, so the, you have the shovels for pushing the material, you know, so the, to the slope and then the material is actually the sliding, you know, say along the slope. When the material is actually the sliding along the slope, the larger size, you know, so the material is actually the going to, uh, <coughs> Uh, get to the bottom. So, uh, so along the along the slope, you know, the, the profile of the material is, you know, so the different. Whereas uh, in the push dumping, uh, yeah, uh, with the shawls, you know, so they, you keep actually the pushing it, you know, so thereby the material is actually the getting uh, segregated, uh, not that quite, you know, so the uh, distinctly. But some sort of, you know, so the mixing will be actually the done. So that means the pines and the the coarse material is actually the going to uh, get mixed up. So thereby, when you are handling the slope stability uh, issues, you know, say in the end dumping and the push dumping, you know, so the could be, you know, so the different. So one can actually the see the type of material, you know, so the which is there uh, uh, in the uh, in the slide. So the the overall scene is, you know, so the mega. It is actually the spreads, you know, so the across. Uh, a uh, uh, few uh, tens of you know so the acres uh, and then uh, it is ever increasing the size of the dump uh, uh, area is actually the keep increasing it so uh, whatever the excavated area so uh, uh, the dumps will be keep creating it and then you know so the further uh, the the excavation is actually the keep proceeding it you know so the so you can see that you know so the extreme end you know so the uh, the external dumps are there so they are almost, you know, so the reaching to, you know, say the 120, uh, you know, say the 150, uh, 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 the meters height. And then whereas gradually, you know, say the internal dumps, you know, say they will be at uh, uh, slightly lesser, you know, <coughs> uh, the heights. The typical material actually looks like that. So it is a very composite, you know, say the with all uh, gradation, you know, say the sizes will be there. Uh, not only the variety of, you know, say the rock formations from which the material is coming, that is different. And because all coal mines, you know, so they're not having the same, you know, so the rock profile. So, and also the type of excavation methodology you are adopting it. Uh, uh, all these, you know, so the, the site conditions are actually the going to give you a typical, uh, typical, you know, material pro profile. So uh, these are the type of, you know, say the mountains we create, you know, say the, in the coal mine area. So the huge, huge, you know, say the slopes will be created and then the slopes, you know, so they should be stable enough. Uh, and then the, mind you, there is no support system, you know, say here, no anchoring, no supports, no, uh, you know, the retaining walls, so etc. Uh, they are there. So it is only just, you know, so the keep pushing the material to the area. So thereby the slopes will be keep, you know, say the, getting stabilized. So we know it, you know, so the, uh, your angle of repose, you know, so the fairly works well uh, here. The overall picture of, you know, so the, the area, if you see it, you know, so it is like this. So very colossal. So uh, many activities simultaneously happening it and these mines, you know, so they do have lot of, lot of, you know, so the water. So the water is also going to uh, uh, create, you know, so the issues for the slopes here. Uh, many times, you know, so the accident occurs. So this is one such uh, Raj Mahal uh, OCP, you know, say the mine. Uh, it is almost like, you know, say a large area, 600 uh, by, uh, you know, say the 100 meter square, you know, say the, the area uh, got slided, you know, 
and then you know say uh, many people you know say the along with the uh, equipment so uh, last so this type of uh, uh, circular failure uh, failures you know so they keep happening it uh, in the mining area if the dump is not you know say the stable so one can see it you know say the the extent of uh, uh, almost like you know say the more than half a kilometer uh, the width of you know so the the dump which is you know so the there so the need for the uh, special study uh, required for this uh, uh, the uh, as i indicated that the skipping ratio uh, that is predicted you know say in 2000 2000 you know say the 25 like to 2021 you know say the stripping so the last you know say the uh, this is the amount of you know say the coal that is being you know say the uh, the the rock is actually the excavated so this is the coal so that is the stripping ratio the stripping ratios you know so the continuously they are increasing it they are continuously increasing it uh, yeah but it is not you know so the cannot be so, is it working okay that's good so uh, if you see the 21 22 the prediction is you know so the that uh, the uh, 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 that is the st uh, uh, the ratio and whereas 22 23 you know so that it is uh, 2.4 plus and what is uh, predicted is you know so the 2.75 for the 25 2025 so that the 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 stripping ratio is keep increasing it what it means is you know so the you need to accommodate you know so the large amount of uh, material in a small area which is available so thereby you will be raising you know say the height of the height of the the dumps so this is the main crux so the dump heights are actually increasing it because of the constraint you know say the area uh, <coughs> because you are producing it you know say more and more waste where do you put it so you need to you know say go vertically up uh, it is not that you know say the what you want you know say the you can do it because you know say there is a mine regulatory authorities will be there so they have the certain rules so they say uh, <coughs> any angle of the slope you know say which is going you know say the beyond the beyond the repose angle so that they won't permit it so that means you know so you will be restricting virtually uh, 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 maybe you know the 30 degrees or so uh, <coughs> so if you make it you know so the 30 degrees slope you know so that you won't be able to increase the increase the height of the slope so you cannot actually ex uh, uh, excavate the ex excavate the coal the country needs it but you cannot actually do it because it is unstable so this is a, a major composite you know uh, a problem not only that you know so the we do the direct shear etc so we, at a particular normal load they are very very uh, uh, you know very low low magnitude but in this case you know say if the height is actually the increasing it you know say the you need to understand the material behavior at very high high stresses so high stresses large size you know say particle size and also you know so the doing a small test you know so the in the direct shear machine of you know say the dimension 6 by 6 is not good enough so you need you know say the bigger 30 by 30 or you know say the maybe 1 meter by 1 meter so our attempt is actually to go you know so the 1.2 by 1.2 you know says uh, a box size and uh, thereby you can actually the accommodate you know so the large size particles large size you know so the uh, material and you know so the get the shear strength characteristics and then those characteristics you know so the, if you use it you can convince the 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 dgms that is you know so the mine regulatory authority okay if if you convince that you know so the, your material is actually this uh, safe you know so uh, 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 for the stability point of view so then you know so the, you can go okay let's see like you know say this is the the so thereby what you do is you know so the increasing the rates of overburden generation so the in the open cost that is the issue increasing pressure on the existing you know so the the land to receive the overburden beyond the initially designed geometry and the demand for the reclamation of the abandoned you know so the mine uh, is the is the real issue so <clears throat> a simple uh, destabilization of the dump slopes will eventually the damage the integrity of the mine because say you have actually the dump the material but then you know so the uh, time being it may be stable but in in future what is actually the going to happen so there was the issue so uh, subsequent mining operations you know so they will get uh, 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 affected 
So the conventional laboratory scale testing is uh, not good enough and uh, to, to get the engineering uh, judgment of the material. So the, so then uh, uh, another thing is, you know, so the representative overburden samples, you know, so that the field stresses, uh, uh, that is also a, uh, another issue. <coughs> So if you see the slopes, you know, so the, uh, we all know that, you know, um, there is a, uh, a, a material can actually the break, you know, so the starting with the tension crack and then, you know, say circular failure could be there. And then the, the bottom is, you know, so that you have the, you have the rock bottom because uh, uh, <coughs> you have excavated and, you know, so the, on the excavated area, you are putting the slope. So the slope failure could be this, a uh, slope failure could be, you know, so the, uh, like this, you know, so the going up to the top and then, you know, so the below the top also. So that means, you know, so it goes much uh, deeper into it. Similarly, like, you know, say the, if you have the dump and, you know, so if you have the slope, so this type of uh, uh, multiple uh, uh, <coughs> wedge uh, failures, you know, so the could be, could be taking place. So this is, as I said that, you know, so this is the so th this is the the bottom so of the coal that has been actually removed, uh, and then you know say the 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 material is is uh, uh, a dump, and then the wedges will be created you know so the because of uh, <coughs> the instability. So if you see the uh, at a different uh, the typical you know say the slope uh, we all know that you know so you have the a, a compression the same the material is actually the getting the simple, you know, say the uh, triaxial or the uniaxial, you know, say the compression. And then, you know, so the in the bottom uh, here, you know, say it is a direct uh, uh, shearing. And then, you know, so the, the, the material is actually getting the extension, you know, so, <coughs> so the failure mechanism is, you know, so the different, uh, uh, at uh, uh, different, you know, say the, the parts of the slope. So scale effect, uh, uh, if OB dumps, you know, so they are going to, you know, so they go to, uh, you know, so the very high, like, you know, so the 250 meters high, etc. So this is, you know, so the imaginary, but maybe in the future, you know, so it is going to, ha going to happen. So if that happens, you know, so the, then, you know, so the, how do you deal? So, <clears throat> so the uncertainty related to the, say, uh, the scale effects is also uh, there. How do you determine the shear strength for modeling, you know, so the stability of the high dumps? So, so that is the main issue. So that is what actually the requires, you know, so this much of, you know, so the introduction. So uh, does the particle size of the coal dump material matters or the, does the stress range uh, on dump, dumps, you know, so the matters? So, so what is the stress at which we are doing the test? Uh, <coughs> that is, ma that matters so as well as, you know, so the particle size. Okay, now let us see like, you know, so the, uh, the, how the, the 90 meter dump looks like that and uh, which can actually they exert, you know, uh, a normal stress of, you know, so the maybe uh, 1 MPA. 1 MPA test, you know, so the, we won't do it, you know, so the, uh, in our regular, you know, so the, on the soil, so. Uh, <clears throat> but this 1 MPA is, you know, so the not, uh, uh, not good enough, you know, so the, if you increase, you know, say the slopes, so say like 120 meters or something. So, <coughs> so 120 is the, of the uh, 120, if you raise it, if you raise it, you know, say the, uh, the stress is actually the obviously increasing it. So, uh, thereby the, we need to understand the material behavior at that particular, you know, say the normal stress. Uh, similarly, like, you know, so the what if, you know, so the, we are taking it, you know, say 350 meters, you know, so the height. So this is again, you know, so the, a mute question. Let's see, like, you know, so the, so the, this is the typical, you know, so the, 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 <coughs> the, uh, of, uh, the shear stress, you know, so versus the normal stress uh, envelope. And we pick up, you know, say the, the phi and the C values and then try to, because our, st the, the investigation that has been actually done is, you know, so that low stresses, so, so thereby, uh, uh, if you ex extrapolate, you know, so the same thing, you know, so the in a linear fashion, so the you will be, you will be getting it, you know, so the very high, 
high you know say the 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 phi angle <coughs> but as such you know so the, if you see that this is the envelope you know so the normally you will be getting so uh, simple extrapolation you know so the is not going to uh, going to be uh, go, go, going to be you know said so the sufficient so you are overestimating material behavior uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, at uh, at you know, so the high normal uh, stresses, so, so thereby uh, extrapolation cannot actually work in this case. So the idea is, you know, so the, when you are handling it large size mine dumps, you know, so the extrapolation of uh, uh, doing you know, say so small tests uh, on this uh, small size, you know, say so the uh, material uh, uh, will not, you know, say so the do it. So from several the uh, ways we are getting the restrictions you know, so that to get the proper materials for the slopes which we are anticipating it you know, to raise it to so 300 uh, uh, plus. So 300 why you know so that because the other countries you know so they are uh, they are you know so the venturing to go to the very high uh, high uh, 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 the heights. Uh, whereas in our country, you know, so there's still the practice is, you know, so the 90 meters, you know, so the. So what is that required is, you know, geotechnical characterization of the overburden material. So, <coughs> and design and development of the large scale uh, direct shear testing mission and the testing of representative uh, material from the different mines. And then, you know, say so the subsequently doing the stability analysis. So these are the four. Uh, important, you know, so the issues, you know, so that we need to address it. So for that, you know, so that we took a very comprehensive uh, research, you know, so the program. So we have the experimental program in the laboratory, uh, characterized from the OB dumps, uh, 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 and for that, you know, so that you can see that, you know, so the large number of mine dump materials, you know, so that have been uh, <coughs> have been collected, you know, so the in in collaboration with Coal India, and uh, we design and developed first time in India the large scale direct shear uh, testing equipment. So that is one of the major you know, so the, uh, important uh, contribution here. So the index properties and the experimental property, uh, uh, the other proper, the experiments you know, so the which we conducted direct shear tests you know, so at 100, 200 and 300 kPa and uh, uh, of course you know, so the compaction char characteristics of the material you know, that has been actually the done. So the high normal stress, uh, uh, because the stress is also very important, we have actually subjected you know, the material under the very high normal stresses. So, so the details are actually given there. Uh, then you know, say the, with these material parameters, you know, say the, we try to use the numerical models uh, so that you know, so the, we, will be, we will be able to get the, 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 the stability analysis you know, so that done through that. Of course, you know, so you can do it with the analytical methods, but you know, so the in more complex conditions, you know, so the of the mines, we can actually create uh, a good numerical, you know, so the assessment, and then see whether the slopes are actually the stable for the material parameters, you know, so we assessed uh, 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 on the large size, you know, so the <coughs> uh, uh, la large size particles uh, under the different, you know, high stresses. So geotechnical characterization of the overburden. So that is the first step, you know, so we did it, it's a mega project and uh, these are the locations, you know, so the, where the, the mining is actually happening it and from there, you know, so the directly uh, uh, from the dumps which have already created, you know, so the we, it's not that easy, that's not actually the loose, you know, so because the dumps are actually there uh, for several years, so, so thereby you need to, you know, so they take the samples, you know, so the, from that, the sample sizes, you know, so they huge. So you need to adopt, you know, say the such type of, you know, say the techniques and, you know, say the get the characterization. So the different, you know, say the coal mine, uh, uh, these are the different, you know, say the coal mining, you know, say the projects in the area. So the material has been actually the taken. So the stripping ratios are also given each mine. What is the, so if the stripping ratio, as we have discussed, you know, say the is low, so then it is fairly, is fairly, you know, say the comfortable because the area is more available, so thereby they can, you know, say the raise to the required heights. But whereas if the stripping ratio is, you know, say the uh, is very high, then it's a problem. So these are the different uh, uh, <coughs> the 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 mining scenario, um, uh, and then you know, say the material once that is actually the available, so in the laboratory, so the the testing uh, uh, 
uh, uh, conducted. So these are the different properties, you know, so the uh, uh, of the material. So the again, you know, so the for doing these tests, you know, so the you won't be using the the large size, you know, so the for the particle size, you now so the you will be doing it, you know, so the smaller. But of course, you know, so the gradation is, you know, so the is done. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so, uh, typical, you know, so particle size distribution. If you see it, you know, so the uh, the 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 material uh, between the you know say the up to maybe you know say the 80 millimeters so that is the size of material we are ab able to you know say the handle it because that is the material which we will be using it for the direct shear when we design the direct shear mission so that is our target okay so uh, these are of course you know so the routine you know so the particle distribution and then what is the amount of gravel that is there almost like you know so the 50 percent of the gravel is actually there you know so the in the uh, uh, in the uh, the the rest is you know so the fairly the sand sand and some uh, silt so the specific gravities the densities variation is actually the, uh, something like that and then you know so the we did the bulk density and you know say specific gravity etc these are the routine things uh, that is not actually the main uh, uh, contention for today's you know, so the uh, presentation. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, did the direct shear, direct shear, you know, so the testing. So, uh, yeah, you can see that, you know, so the, the, the mean values of you know, so the C values which are actually there. C is of course, you know, so the here in this material, you know, say so this uh, fairly the secondary in the sense, you know, say so it is a it is a more granular material and then the phi is the controlling you know so that and uh, most of the phi values if you see the table you know so the maybe you know say the 33 35 so going you know so the occasionally you know so the beyond uh, that as well so uh, you got the material you did the characterization and then you know say the design and development of the large direct shear machine so that is our you know so the attempt so uh, uh, we we try to you know say the assess uh, uh, so what is the war button that is actually the going to or the stress which is actually the going to come uh, <coughs> and uh, for the design you know so that we need that uh, and then also like you know say the, the target material you know say the characteristics which we want it so uh, this is the large direct shear you know say the the machine that has been actually the designed and fabricated you know say the uh, in, in Delhi and uh, it's almost like you know so the five five crores you know so the worth of uh, money we received you know so from the coal india so for which you know so this design is actually uh, uh, made so uh, all the stipulations you know so the followed uh, astm codes etc uh, what is the what is the because to fix the sizes you know so the you need to do what is the material you have and for which you know so the what type of you know so the the design capacities you know so the you need to inbuilt uh, that is what uh, we uh, addressed when we are designing the overall mission you know so the looks like that you know so you can see the shear box uh, uh, it, yeah so uh, you have the side view and you know so the you have the front view so the vertical uh, uh, normal load is can be applied and then you know, so under that normal load you know so you can do the you can do the the, the shearing uh, <clears throat> there are two concepts and also the one is uh, uh, in soils you know so the the shear box goes you know so very parallel because the material is you know so the uh, uh, small size as well as you know so the softer but whereas you know so the when you are doing the rock or you know so the granular material large size if you do it you know so the shear box is going to go uh, slightly because the asperities you know so the will be there and then thereby going up and down. So the, when it happens, you know, so the controlling the normal stress is not constant, you know, say throughout the test. So thereby you get, you know, say the normal stiffness CNS, you know, say the machine. So this functions as normal, uh, uh, normal uh, uh, this one as well as, you know, say the CNL and CNS, you know, say the both conditions. Normally we use it for the rock joints. <coughs> Uh, shear strength characteristics. So, so the two, this the single machine, you know, so they can handle it, you know, so the two variety of boxes within that box in a box. So the inside, you know, so they have a small box which is actually there, uh, 300 by 300, you know, say uh, size. Um, if you if you want to do, you know, that particular uh, particle range, you know, so that you can do that. Uh, rest of the area will be blocked. 
Uh, whereas if you are using it, the full uh, space available of the box, so th that is, you know, say the 1000 by 1000. So that means one meter by one meter size box. And uh, it is a huge. The material that is required is, you know, so the almost uh, three, four tons. Three, four tons of material you have to put it, you know, so the, to do the, the single, you know, so the test. And after that, you know, say so evacuate and then uh, refill it, you know, so for the another normal stress. Uh, a minimum, you know, say the three, four uh, different, you know, normal stresses, you know, so we need. To. So the rest of the things, you know, so the, uh, 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 you know, so they are there. Uh, uh, for this, you know, so in CMPD, they have created a new lab. So because to, uh, to, to house this particular equipment, you know, so you need a special lab. Uh, so, um, so this is the, the, the location at which, you know, say the, the, we have, you know, say the place of the, uh, this, this is a national facility now. So for all the coal mines, you know, so they need to the certification and they will bring the material and then the test is actually done and then their way it will be decided like, you know, so the what extent, you know, so the, uh, the height they can, you know, say so the uh, uh, handle it, you know, so for, 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 for each mine without certification, you know, so that they cannot actually uh, 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 run the. So these are the close-ups. So, uh, Many more like, you know, the stiffness of the, the whole frame and, you know, so how it behaves under, you know, say so there's so much of, you know, heavy loads, etc. Uh, that is a separate, you know, say so the uh, uh, study that has been actually the done. And then these are the uh, the loads of the maximum loads, you know, so one can actually go is, you know, so the 2,500 kilonewtons uh, and shearing is also, you know, so the equal, so 2,500 kilonewtons. And then the rest of the things, you know, so the, which are actually there. Uh, so you can, you know, so the both, you know, uh, the very specialized, you know, so the sitting arrangement is actually the done for the loading. So spherical sitting uh, for equal stress and again, you know, spherical sitting, you know, so the, for the equal, you know, so the strains. So uh, fully automated, so thereby you will be able to get, you know, so the complete, uh, uh, the typical plots which are actually the required, you know, so the, for, the, for the assessment of material characteristics, you know, so that you will be able to. So uh, the calibrations uh, uh, on the model test, you know, so that they have been done and then on the real material, you know, so the, we did it. So this may be uh, <coughs> uh, seven OB uh, dump materials, you know, so the designated uh, uh, OB1, 2, you know, so the OB7 and uh, the particle uh, size range is, you know, so the 20 millimeters to uh, and then, you know, so the 80 millimeters. So these are the two sizes, ranges, you know, so the, which we have selected. The box size I have indicated. So normal, low normal stresses and high normal stresses up to going 6,000 kPa normal loads, you know, so the, uh, uh, that is applied. So thereby uh, 119, you know, so the tests performed uh, <coughs> uh, uh, under very regulated uh, uh, conditions. So, so this is how actually the the sample uh, uh, looks uh, and uh, get all the engineering properties on this uh, uh, and then also like uh, whatever the, the 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 density you know say the field density so that is actually achieved you know so the, in the laboratory as well so it means you know some amount of uh, compaction required and then the amount of uh, uh, compaction uh, energy that is required you know so that to compact the specimen you know so the uh, sample uh, in the uh, uh, in the box, you know, so the, that is uh, uh, decided and uh, done accordingly. Scale effects, so, so uh, again within the mission, you know, say 330 uh, by 30 or, you know, say the, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know, uh, the another one, you know, say the one, uh, the 100 by 100, you know, say the uh, different sizes missions also, you know, so the properties vary. The same material, you know, so the, if you do it, you know, so the different size uh, equipment, uh, so uh, you will be getting a separate material itself is, you know, so the is different, but you know, say uh, same material under, you know, so the, uh, uh, the, the, the mission, uh, uh, that is also, you know, so the differs. So the size, that is the grain size and the box size, you know, so that is also taken into account. So then you have the the high stress and low stress under these conditions, you know, so that we have. So some of the, some of the efforts, you know, so the, which are actually captured in these, uh, uh, in these, you know, say so the, in this slide. 
and then you know say uh, the the some sort of you know say the 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 load versus the strain curves you know so they will be uh, reaches the peak and then you know say the fairly goes you know say the uh, uh, you know horizontal asymptote and uh, <coughs> so this is the 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 material is you know say the uh, the first one is you know say the material is uh, 25 millimeters uh, size range maximum and then you know say the second one is you know say the this is uh, uh, 800 millimeters you know say the the uh, 80 millimeters uh, so, so size range so what is the difference we can see it you know say the so um, uh, here it is you know say the going you know say the horizontal so then uh, fairly uh, 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 and then you know say the uh, uh, there is a peak uh, some sort of and then you know say the uh, that horizontalness is actually the further maintaining it um, so uh, this is the typical shear stress versus you know say the shear strain you know say the plots under the uh, 1 mpa 2 you know say the 6 mpa loads so very high uh, and then you know say they try to try to plot you know say the 25 mm uh, less than 25 mm and then you know say the uh, under the dst dst is you know so the normal uh, size box uh, so that is uh, uh, 30 by 30 and then whereas you know say this uh, uh, ldst is you know so the large size uh, so the properties are actually the different so it is very clear you know so here so is you know um, <coughs> The small size uh, is falling there, and then you know, say the beyond that, you know, say the uh, it is fairly the linear. So the values are actually the different. So thereby, uh, we uh, <coughs> we have you know, say the uh, in comparison, you know, say 300 by 300 uh, or the 1000 by 1000, you know, say the same material. Uh, if it is tested, how it is actually the giving the uh, uh, the properties. <clears throat> so, uh, what we observe it here from this table, if you compare, you know, say for all the test results, you know, say the a marginal difference of, you know, say the phi value, which is, you know, say slightly lower than, you know, say the uh, <clears throat> the smaller size box. So, the smaller size box is, you know, 30 by 30. So, it is the first case if you take it, you know, say the 36.332. And then whereas they say uh, 1000 by 1000, you know, say it is 35.86, marginal difference. So the same, same, you know, say the uh, similar type of uh, trend is, you know, say the observed, you know, say in all the, uh, in all the test cases. So uh, this is very vital, you know, so the, even the, uh, we may say that, you know, say the, the phi value is, you know, say the very small marginal, but it is not marginal. So from the, from the, 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 the eventually you know say when you do the design of you know say the 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 dump slopes so that angle is very very uh, crucial so you can see that you know say the comparison so the so the the red one is you know say the larger size and then you know say the uh, <coughs> the the same mission this is you know so the ld uh, uh, ldst so the large side dash shear you know so the testing mission uh, but the different range of you know so the material so again the values are actually the differing you know so they here so similarly like you know so the five versus the normal stress uh, you can you know say the uh, see the difference you know so there so with uh, uh, with these things you know so the we got the fair idea uh, uh, it is not that the same trend is actually the constantly you know say the observed so the like if the particle size is actually the increasing it you know say the phi value is actually the going to decrease you know that is also not there uh, uh, throughout so uh, some sort of you know so the if you see the failure envelopes you know so the uh, we can you know say the uh, maybe you know say three segments so the the first one if you see take it you know very steep so that is going up to the 2000 you know so the uh, normal load sigma n and then after that you know so the very steep increase is actually the happening it so uh, the <coughs> the test data is not actually you know so the put here so only the uh, the envelopes is actually the the shown and then you know so the you have the third zone so which is you know so the very high high normal stress uh, we observed you know say certain mechanism <coughs> 
see in the beginning you know see the we 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 try to because you know see the after the test or the during the test the movements as well as you know so the after the test the material you know say when you start actually excavating it a close observation was actually the made and then thereby rearrangement because uh, the particles you know see in the beginning they are loose so they will be get rearranged and then some amount of sliding is actually the happening it so thereby in this particular zone you know so the you do have the rearrangement the first zone zone one and then the second zone is you know so the uh, <coughs> So the the rubbing and rolling. So the particles are actually the now close, so, but then you know say the uh, they are you know say the during the shearing you know say the rolling is happening it because the particles are actually the fairly the fairly the strong enough you know so the to resist uh, no crushing is actually the happening it. So uh, rubbing and uh, uh, rolling, and then you know say the you are having it you know say the chipping and sliding. So once you have you know say the the higher uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, normal stresses and also the, if they are there you know so the obviously the chipping and sliding is actually the taking place okay so uh, the variation of you know so the five values with the sigma n you know so the for different uh, uh, loads on the different variety of materials you know so the, that is uh, that is given there if you plot it something you know so the like that you will be getting it so uh, it is not you know so the same you can you know say extrapolate it material behavior is you know so the uh, is fairly changing it uh, yeah, there are. Uh, we try to, you know, so the fit into the the some sort of uh, uh, regression analysis, you know, so that that we try to do it, you know, say for our uh, experimental results. So, so to create some empirical relation. So because we have done the fairly, you know, so the good amount of uh, experimentation at large size uh, particles. So thereby, uh, can we create, you know, so the at least, you know, so the some sort of uh, <coughs> uh, relation. So. Uh, uh, since it is a large size material, so it's a highly broken uh, rock. Uh, so that means, you know, so the now it is, you know, say the uh, soil is actually now getting into the rock. So because uh, it is a contiguous, that is what actually we believe. And uh, large size uh, particles means, you know, so the end of the rock mechanics is actually the coming into the uh, or the end of the soil mechanics uh, 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 domain is, you know, so the getting into the rock. So. Idea is, you know, so the can we create, you know, so the some soil and uh, uh, rock, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, the scenario uh, 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 in a single uh, uh, shot. So you can see that, you know, so the uh, uh, unknowingly, you know, so the we have been, you know, so the looking for the literature. So then you can see that uh, uh, Professor Dimenlaus, you know, so the very classic uh, uh, observations, you know, so the which we have taken, you know, so the. Uh, in this particular study, this study is almost like you know, so the completed one year back. So thereby, it is not that you know, so the lecture was actually the given. So thereby, the uh, we are you know, so the bringing it. You know, this is already published. You know, so the paper in the international journal. So what I mean to say is, you know, so these contributions, you know, so the uh, come uh, handy to us uh, to create, you know, so the some amount of regression uh, model. Uh, <coughs> Okay, so then you know, say once you have established the the the, the material character um, uh, for the external dumps and then internal dumps, you know, say the um, what is the the required, you know, say the height of the slope and then you know, say the bench angle. So we we play with the uh, the numerical, you know, say the modeling, uh, uh, taking, you know, say the 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 relevant, you know, say the material properties. Uh, <coughs> So the, the heights, you know, so the, for the external dumps, we have gone up to the 90, 90 meters. Presently, uh, they are, because we have to calibrate it, you know, so the, because uh, 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 mind design, you know, so it is already accepted. So thereby, we wanted to test it, you know, so the, whether really uh, 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 working or not. So 120 meters and 150. So that is the uh, the Indian government, you know, so the target. We should actually the go for the 150 uh, uh, you know, say the uh, in soon. So the internal dumps, you know, so that we have gone up to the 150, 180, 210, and 240. So the, <coughs> the height and you know, so the bench angles, you know, so they are not uh, restricted at 30 degrees. So the we are, you know, so the uh, uh, we have, we have gone up to the 40 degrees. So if we can ach achieve, you know, so the 40 degrees, so then you know, so the 
we will be able to uh, go much beyond the stripping ratios which anticipating it for the 2023 uh, you know so the uh, one for, uh, the 2.75 you know, so or so we can go uh, much more you know so the the uh, higher uh, stripping ratios so uh, strength properties evaluated as i said that you know so the in a smaller size box as well as you know so the 1 meter by 1 meter you know large la large size so these are the profiles so, so the as usual when you do the numerical stability analysis you know so the you will be getting the failure envelope so thinking that you know so it is a slip circle more column equation uh, <coughs> um, uh, um, so uh, the the individual benches as well as you know say the the uh, overall uh, uh, that and then you know say they added the probability analysis of the global failure uh, um, so uh, assessment etc so the, we have you know so the done so uh, this is uh, the effort which has been uh, uh, indicated in all these you know. so the bench angles 35 to 41 you know so that we have uh, uh, gone and uh, the test results you know so the uh, indicated you know so the here uh, <coughs> uh, um, the so the factor of safety is so the, like you know so the, you have the minimum factor of safety and the maximum factor of safety and then the mean if you take it you know so the, it is going 1.74 uh, or so in, and in all the cases you know so the failure we are able to and whatever the uh, as per the caudal provision you know so the so we cannot actually do the site specific studies for the uh, for the uh, 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 the seismic forces so, so thereby we adopted you know so the readily available uh, 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 literature as well as you know, so the caudal provision because we need to get you know see the accepted by the uh, as per the codes as well so uh, that is uh, that is what you know so the the uh, uh, attempted you know so the in this particular you know so the uh, major study mm, see uh, as you see it you know so the take away things you know so the we designed you know so the large scale uh, dire shear mission and uh, the testing has been uh, done from the uh, different mine materials, you know, so the actual materials, no <coughs> uh, tested and 300 as well as, you know, so the 1000 by 1000, you know, so the scale tests have been actually the conducted at very high, high stresses, you know, so the as well. Um, <coughs> uh, the, uh, both, you know, say the small and the large size, you know, say the, the shear boxes and uh, uh, scale effects uh, we could uh, fairly understood uh, you know say they're doing the testing on small and you know say the large uh, size you know say the we could you know say the fairly make out and then its repercussions on the shear strength you know say the properties that is also understood and uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, scale dependent dependent variable variability you know say the uh, that is uh, uh, the fairly comprehend uh, <clears throat> um, so um, uh, these uh, we have discussed yeah so the maybe this is the 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 last slide so the, now you need to go to the 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 coal mine regulatory authority and then you know say the uh, make them understand you know say the whole mechanics of it and then try to you know say uh, target to, uh, <coughs> Uh, or increase the target of you know say the heights of the the dump and uh, if we convince them you know say the uh, the material is having it you know say the much better uh, much better you know uh, uh, <coughs> behavior so thereby uh, approvals will be there and then that becomes you know so the uh, uh, subsequently it will be useful for the uh, for the mines to handle so research also uh, results or uncertainties regarding the shearing behavior of the uh, contemporary and the planned OB uh, dumps uh, up to 250 meter height and at high stresses obviously and provides advice and also the, on determining the reliable shear strength parameters for the geotechnical design and uh, test results shows that the current practice of estimation of shear strength parameters using the uh, less than 25 millimeter uh, uh, underestimates the shear strength properties of the OB materials and then factor of safety uh, of the dumps considerably. So the DGMS insists uh, for a minimum of uh, 
they need you know say 1.5 you know so the uh, in the beginning i i indicated uh, <coughs> uh, so if the minimum uh, factor of safety is you know say the 1.3 uh, for the temporary slope so that is what actually the demand so the results uh, obtained you know say the through this particular study will definitely you know say the makes the dgms you know so the understand uh, the whole thing and then you know say the increase the storage capacity of the dump can be enhanced you know say without uh, compromising the uh, stability so by way of you know so the accommodating more uh, ov material so maybe uh, i i keep always telling because i am a uh, more you know say the rock mechanics uh, uh, man um, i always feel you know say the uh, so soil mechanics you know so the absolutely having a particular uh, uh, it's you know so the domain is you know so the a particular range of material and the stresses um, <clears throat> but we we need you know so the much larger you know so the uh, uh, <clears throat> so we need a boulder mechanics we need you know so soil mechanics uh, similarly like you know so the to handle uh, a larger size you know so the material behavior simple regression analysis or you know say extrapolations etc will not do will not do and we need to uh, have a boulder mechanics so probably you know say that that is what actually the going to uh, come soon so thank you uh, i just go a chapter you know so that you have done it excellently and uh, uh, purnanand ji and the team you know so that they have done you know so the excellent uh, arrangements for this particular lecture so um, uh, gtrs is the company you know so the which we are you know so the uh, 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 putting in the line so stands for you know so the geotechnical testing and research solutions because i believe that you know so the every problem is a is a having a research component so there is no textbook solutions you know so the uh, <clears throat> some guidance may be there but soil is different conditions are different so so thereby in the morning we are discussing that you know say the without seeing the soil you know say the reports uh, based on the reports you know say the if you do it you know so that you will be definitely having the problems so thereby um, you do the investigations but then you know say the for finally you know say giving the solution is not you know say that uh, uh, bookish uh, solutions so there is a ingenuity there is a research uh, for every problem uh, <clears throat> so thereby uh, we call it is you know so the geotechnical testing uh, and you know so the research solutions so, so that's what actually we are coming up so my teachers you know say so professor madhav mentors you know say so the and then senior colleagues you know say so the <clears throat> they're all you know say so the helped in making uh, uh, this and then funding agencies especially i thank uh, Well, India Limited uh, uh, and also the CMPDA uh, is a small research institute, uh, uh, a small area. They are spread, but they have given it, you know, so the good space to us to create this particular facility. Now it become a national facility. They created a wing there, and they made it compulsory that you know, so the every mine material should be tested here, and then based on that, you know, so the what is the the height they should actually the Uh, allow for each mine you know say that is uh, you know assessed through this facility so of course the hico is actually fabricated this particular mega uh, equipment i thank them and uh, family and extended family of my students and also the so they are large in number so uh, some of them you know say they worked uh, uh, on this particular you know say the project so at least you know half a dozen people they are continuously toiled for the last you know say four years or so so there by now we will be able to uh, say that we uh, started understanding the large size uh, material so not only the material but mechanics is actually required so thereby we feel that you know so the boulder mechanics is you know so the is very desperately uh, required you know say for handling it large in the rock fill dams so again the similar type of thing so we uh, put the large size you know say the particles etc but they established it you know so the uh, fairly uh, the stable because so, so many dams so they by practice you know so they could uh, testing is very limited uh, and uh, 
but in spite of that, you know, so they are able to move on. Uh, but whereas, you know, so the, um, these mind dumps, you know, so they're still not, you know, so they reach to that level of uh, understanding. So, but to do that, you know, so this effort is actually the going to be of immense help. So, thank you very much. Any questions or anything? If uh, so, if then nothing is there. So, ah, yes, yeah, sir. And the best part is they're all standing with the kind of stabilization, both geotechnical and biotechnical, which has been working well. But maybe you would have been wiser with your work. The so the angle of repose is working there. Uh, there. So based on that, you know, so the question. So yeah. started working around 30 to That's 32. It. Looks like yeah. you have confirmed our. Yeah. We're slightly conservative, but we're back in 98 to yeah. 2000. Second thing I wanted to mention is there is a UN environmental program mm. based in Geneva. Yeah. They are finding out alternate sources of sand. Mm. I was one of the members for about three, four years. We have been recommending using mine waste as an alternate source. Yeah. I have a feeling at some stage, instead of just leaving it as a dump, because we are shortage of sand in the country yeah. for all the industry, yeah. we need to characterize this for applications, not only as a geotechnical one, for others. Yeah, if you have, you know, so the maybe uh, a marble or, you know, so the uh, a sandstone, no, so then you can convert into the fairly the sand, usable. Uh, but whereas if you have the shale or phyllite or this type of, you know, so the micaceous material is there, you know, so the, that will be, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. For the sake of environment, mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then not only that, sir, like, you know, once the mine uh, uh, okay, excavated, again, you are refilling it and rehabilitate in that area. It is not that, you know, so the, those, so yeah, yeah, so that is, yeah, 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 because they have to bring back the forest, by, uh, you know, so the more intense, you know, so they have to do that, so that, thanks, sir. Professor K.S. Rao.